I've got a problem with this Genrab 1650. It should be evident with this detuned um, 10 microfarad capacitor seen here. And the problem is this. In looking at the detector output, we see that the AC frequency that's generated by this unit is 974, 975 hertz. As we expect to, expect to see, one kilocycle. Now the documentation talks about reading some transistor voltages as well as looking at the uh, circuit diagram. This is not a Heath kit, right? So we don't have a um, obvious uh, trimmer capacitor that we'll be able to simply go and, and adjust. So we're going to have to open the unit, look at some possible electrolytics there that might be leaking some voltages, look at some resistors and replace them as necessary. But I think the first thing we're really gonna have to do is come and take a look at these transistors right here and make sure because that's the only um, definitive thing that we're given um, is these transistor voltages right here. So if we could look at those and make sure that their voltages are not being pulled down because it also discusses um, battery levels, voltage levels that may pull down uh, the frequency as well. So we're gonna have to take the unit apart and take a look at that because um, yeah, obviously 975 is not gonna work. That's, that's too low and you can see there is some drift too. I started paying close attention to the circuits between transistors 1 and 4. And in doing so, looking at the voltage drops between around the capacitors around those circuits. And eventually I said, let's just look at the voltage drops around all of these old spray capacitors here. And once I started looking at the voltage drops on, on both sides of these capacitors, I started asking myself if it's time to look at the ESR and all these things. And I started finding some... Uh, uh, 0.22 ESRs and then it would jump up to 9 ohms on here and then no legible ESR on these and when I hooked up my capacitor meter I, I found no capacitance at all a lot of these capacitors have already started to fail which is probably why the oscillator circuits not working at all I'm gonna have to go through now and declare every one of these capacitors on this board suspect uh, test each one individually and then replace them so that's what this event has become now is a, a recap job. They're all failing. When I started to order the uh, replacement capacitors, I noticed this 0 0.082 microfarad capacitor down here and didn't see it on the list. When I looked at it labeled as 101 alpha, it said that it was laboratory supplied and that meant by the company that produced it. When I looked in the schematic diagram, it showed it as a extension as an extension of this one microfarad capacitor and that meant that this in fact was the trimmer the balance for this capacitor or the balance for the circuit so i said okay here it is this has got to be something for the oscillator right so here is 985 hertz as we see demonstrated on here so what i did was obviously it's a lot easier to add capacitance than it is to remove it in these test circuits so I have this 0.1 microfarad capacitor here. And when I go from 985 and connect this, which I will do, and I'm not, this is not to say that it fixes anything else, but if I add capacitance, you'll see that it just dropped to 980, 980, 981, right? This is not a balanced uh, measurement by any means, right? Because I've now added capacitance, right? And then I go, and remove this from the circuit and you see it jumps right back up to 985. So adding capacitance lowers the frequency and removing capacitance from the circuit increases the frequency. It's worth pointing out that this measured uh, twice the capacitance uh, that was listed on here. That being said, you know, it's obviously tied in with this capacitor. So it's going to read that capacitor too. I cannot measure this capacitor in circuit. That being said, again, I'm measuring the capacitance or measuring these values um, against a completely broken oscillator circuit, right? So maybe this is absolutely perfect, right? So maybe if I put it together and measuring one, one eight two or whatever I'm reading, one point eight two, uh, both capacitors in parallel, that would be fine if everything else wasn't completely broken. It seems awfully complicated as compared to the uh, to the Heathkit oscillator, you know. The, this all of this is is really. In, in support of the oscillator. It was absolutely amazing. But there it is. That's the trimmer, basically. So I'm not going to order that capacitor. I'm going to 
fix this, see where this lands, and use my capacitor uh, decade box to find out what's going on, a add some trimmers in parallel or series, whatnot, to get exactly 1,000 hertz, and we're going to call it a day with this, okay? That's going to be it. I've recapped this board here. The electrolytic capacitors have been replaced. I have left this uh, polyester capacitor right here, this one microfarad, that's still tested good. It is not electrolytic. I have bought one as a spare, as a backup. I felt no need to replace it right now. Um, this capacitor right here, this one microfarad within 2% and the one under it is for metering the frequency level. We'll be playing with that after we get the board back up and running. They're not to be replaced yet. Board was specifically challenging. Uh, this fidelic material, uh, the traces are pretty much made of like solder itself. It's quite terrible to work with. You can see where the silver areas are. This is where I had to do the rework. Uh, everything is back together now. I think I did a pretty good job, all things considered. Uh, it was pretty extensive. There wasn't a whole lot of room to work, but it's all done. We're going to start our test again. We're going to look at the levels of the transistors, and we're going to make a comparison to the old ones. So now I've removed this capacitor, 0.082. This was the trimmer that was down here. This is connected to the one microfarad capacitor of 2%. And I've added some alligator clips and connected to my Heathkit Decade condenser box. Now without that capacitor, we drift upward and end up with 1.018 kilohertz which is now too much as expected but because I have my condenser box here and this is not calibrated but we don't need it to be calibrated I need only dial up because I know roughly what the old one was 0 0.082 I know that I'm going to use the uh, 0 0.01 measurements down here to approximate exactly where I'm going to need to be so what I'm going to do is set my oscilloscope right here and go up in increments of 0 0.01 until I'm able to get the oscillator to come down to exactly 1K. So we go to 1, see where it drifts now. We'll go to 2, 3, 4. four. Look at that. 0 0.04 microfarads of capacitance added on as a trimmer to the existing one microfarad capacitor brings this circuit to exactly one kilohertz or 1000 cycles, which is exactly what we want. Now that's only as a matter of reference with regard to this box. So all I need to do is take the end of these alligator clips, not the box, but the end of these alligator clips and measure the capacitance off the end of these clips. When I know exactly what that capacitance is, I take that value and tie a capacitor onto the end of this. This should give me exactly 1000 hertz, which is what we're looking for. Clearly the drift is a lot different than the original factory specification of 0 0.082. But this is what we're gonna need to be able to get this thing back going at 1000 so that our dissipation and Q dial will read effectively. And that's what we want. That should be the last thing that we're going to need to do down here on this um, oscillator board. Quick measurement with the LCR meter yields 0 0.037, 0 0.038. That's what we're going to go with. I have hand selected three capacitors whose values together come out to exactly 0 0.038. These capacitors are currently connected with these alligator clips to the device. And we see that our frequency counter shows exactly 1.00000. This is perfectly 1 hertz. This is exactly what we want. I'll make a, a, a small mount for this. They'll be mounted into here. Finally, we'll be able to put this device back together and start our calibration procedure. Now we have to the thousandths of a microfarad, uh, the trimmer added to this capacitor. We'll now check to see what the frequency is of the oscillator. The final verdict bounces between 999 and 1000 hertz. That's good enough for me. I'm gonna call this portion of the project done. I'm going to put this back in. We're going to calibrate this, close up the unit, get it ready for testing. The unit is now completely reassembled. The board is back in. It's not exactly plug and play, 
um, requires some soldering. Uh, all the front panel switches have now been reinstalled. It can be now set back up and uh, do some testing, make sure everything's okay. But this is completed. Okay, with the unit back together one more time, we'll have a look. We'll fluctuate the CRL knob, look at the waveform. Everything's set up uh, roughly around a balance right here. You can see I'm, I'm sitting here just outside of a null or a given capacitor. So that's what I'm doing. And here's my waveform sitting around 999 cycles. And I'm turning that knob back and forth. You can see that we're looking pretty good. So everything is fixed on the oscillator board. The waveform is nice and clean now. Uh, no longer clips on the ends like it did earlier. We were getting some uh, some distortions when we were peaking and we were getting them at much lower than one volt per division. Uh, as we see now, we're at one volt per division, so we're seeing a significant amount of voltage here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight volts peak to peak and still no uh, distortion on the waveform. Uh, that had to do with a lot of the problems that we were having on that board. So I haven't seen what the max is, but as the uh, galvanometer has all the way at 10, I imagine that this is, is probably a substantial amount of voltage right now. So yeah, it's fixed. Another piece of equipment is fixed. So very good, working. Now we could start doing other things like checking the calibration and comparing this one against our um, impedance bridge, our heat kit, and seeing how well I did on that. So I expect that obviously something like this is um, is extremely precise as compared to the heat kit, but uh, we'll see how well the heat kit turned out. Obviously this had a problem with an oscillator, it shouldn't affect its precision anyway. Uh, it's been fixed now, so we shall see what the outcome is. Stay tuned. Get it? Stay tuned.